difficult to endure. There are so many people in our world today that are working so hard, trying to build a life or a dream, but who may have realized that the road they travel may come to be a dead end. And when they do make that realization, they may ask, is this all there is to life? How tragic to plod along day after day in a life that lasts joy and wonder. All because we choose not to change. We choose not to look at the world with wonder. In our true age of wonders, filled by spaceships and the internet and microchips and Phones that do more than we can ever imagine. And other inventions that our grandparents or even we who are grandparents could never have foretold. We have become a society generally characterized not by awe and wonder, but by cynicism and empty hearts. And that in itself is a wonder for how can we who have seen and experienced so many new marvels within our lives find ourselves possibly spiritually empty and incapable of observing the wonder of our world. It should make us stop to consider what is happening to us, what is happening to God's creation. The 20th century began with predictions of a future utopia just around the corner. Incredible victories in science and industry would surely discover new prosperities, new capabilities, and new answers to old problems. As we know, the 20th century arrived with the marvel of the light bulb. But so many people still ask, is that all there is? So many people on earth live all crammed up together with security lights in their midst that are so bright that sunsets and stars become distant memories. Just as our capabilities have grown exponentially within the scientific and the industrial world, there was a company that came along to call itself Google, one without end. Yet so many people's capability for wonder seems to have withered away almost to the nth degree. A century ago, G.K. Chesterton wrote, The world is not lacking in wonder. The world is not lacking in wonder, but it lacks a sense of wonder. Okay, I, I realize the first few moments of this morning's message have been a little bit heavy, so I want everybody to just sit back, take a big deep breath, and, and relax. And then I want you to remember a time when your heart was filled with wonder. Were you a child and got that special something new at Christmas? Or was it when your newborn daughter or son was placed in your arms and you marveled at the incredible gift from God? Maybe it was a time in which you visited the Colorado Rockies or the Grand Canyon or, or Niagara Falls. Whatever it was, it is that moment of awe that we remember. And we deserve to redirect our heart and our relationship with God so that sense of awe that we experience is available all of the time, whenever we choose, in the presence of God. You see, that sense of awe is what so many people are missing in our world. So many empty hearts lacking the awe and sense of wonder they deserve because they look for things of this world to satisfy their heart not looking to the love and the abundance offered by our Father in heaven. David the psalmist, who gazed upon the stars that we gaze today, must have marveled at what he saw. And he must have realized who was watching over him. And as he thought about his Lord, our Lord, according to Psalm 8, he was brought to consider himself, who am I? that I would be worthy of even a thin moment of your attention. I suspect we've all wondered that. 
we wonder that if we give God a thin moment of our time, will he reassure us of our place in his kingdom and provide for us whatever need may be at hand? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Our roadmap for life, the Bible that we have, is more than just a wonderful book. It is a book that is full of wonder. It begins with the wonder of creation implanted deeply within each and every one of our souls. It ends with the wonderful culmination of God's final judgment and the reassurance. No more sorrow. No more tears. No more pain. And at the very center of our Bible, where it's really easy to find, there are the Psalms. Filled with wonder and praise. So, for us, to look at our world with childlike wonder as we are encouraged to by our Lord and not look at it like the Grinch who stole Christmas, what must we do? What must we do? As Luke 18 records, Jesus said our heart must lose its cynicism and we must become trusting and childlike. We must be humble, and we must remember, it's all about Jesus, it's not about us. And I believe to recover the wonder and, the, and to rediscover the awe in the presence of God, we need to change a few ways that we live. So I've got a few suggestions for this morning. First, we need to be passionate about living every moment in the wonder of worship. In our secular, it's all about me world, we will swim against the current that is present. But if you really wish to be in the presence of God and to be in the wonder of our Father in heaven, he will provide us the strength, the perseverance to swim against the tide of the world. Secondly, we must know God, rather than just knowing about him. Anyone can read the Bible. Anyone can know about God. But to really know him, even though it seems so obvious, it takes time. It takes prayer. It takes study. It takes the realization that we are broken by our very humanness within us, and that it is only Jesus Christ that can save us from this world that we often see, that we really have come to realize we don't want to be all a part of it. Without the gift of wonder when we worship and we gather, so, many, so much will be missed. And though our heart remains thirsty, if we are not in awe and wonder of our Father in heaven, our heart will go. We need to serve God rather than just to identify him. Growth in faith comes through doing the things that Jesus would. Growth in faith is doing the things that Jesus would do. You see, the Pharisees, they knew everything about God. They knew everything. Paul even admitted that. He knew everything. He had lineage. He had education. He was taught by the best. But so many of his colleagues just lost touch with our Father in heaven. We will encounter God by serving others. And we will be in awe in his presence. We need to worship God daily. Which will require some adjustments and sacrifices on our part. Sacrifice is just not a real popular word these days. But sacrifice should be at the heart of every child of God who worships him. So if you live every moment in the world, the wonder of God, you will change the way that you look at life and the way that you will live your life. But to do that requires new ways of thinking and of new priorities. And some of that change may be painful. It may be painful to be obedient. Might it be painful to be humble? Might it be painful for us to think of others first? And 
to be nice to someone who has always been mean to us? Oh, Lord, please. But yes, that is what he wants us to do. But in the end, you will count all of these losses as you sacrifice as gifts of joy that come, that come in knowing our Father in heaven. With every moment of living in the presence of God, your heart can and will be filled with joy. Your actions will speak volumes to those who will want to know why you live as you do, whether they ask it or not. And the light of your joy will melt the despair and the cynicism of people whose path you will cross. And that I am sure of. We choose to live the way we do for many reasons, but ultimately, we live as we do today, knowing that Jesus will come again. Jesus tells us that, but yet he also tells us that no one will know the day of the time. But we need to be ready. And as we are charged by Christ's great commission to go out into all of the world, we need to encourage and educate others to a life that awaits them now. There is a story of a young girl who was born blind. A beautiful little girl with blonde hair and deep blue eyes. And when she was 12, the surgeons had developed a new type of surgery that, if successful, would bring her the gift of sight. Now, her mother had always read to her and had always described the outdoors to her so that she although without the sight, could live with those images within her heart. And so the young girl had surgery, and the outcome wouldn't be known for several days because it was an experimental procedure. She wore bandages for several days, and then once the bandages were removed, she spent several days in almost a completely darkened room, waiting. But she didn't wait alone. Her mother was there, spending hours answering her daughter's questions of what things would look like and what colors they would be. They were so excited about this that neither one of them slept for several days. Over and over again, even in the darkness of that room, they talked about every lovely thing that they could imagine, colors and shapes, beauty of every kind. And finally, the moment came when the young girl's eyes could endure the light to look out the window. Her mother raised the shades and her daughter walked to the window and she stood for a long time looking out that, that window without saying a word. For it was a spring day, warm white fluffy clouds and a blue sky. Lacy blossoms that sprinkled the ground like pink snow as the breeze would blow, blow off the cherry blossoms. Yellow crocuses proudly lined the, the brick walkway that was present in their yard. The girl just stood there for several minutes, taking in everything, completely speechless. And then when she turned back to her mother's, there were tears streaming down her cheeks, and she said, Mama, Mama, why didn't you tell me it would be so beautiful? Our world is beautiful. Yes, there is a I see. 
dusty skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed days, the dark sacred nights. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I hear babies cry and I watch them grow. They'll learn so much more. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. It is an incredible world that God has created for us to enjoy, to be a part of, to be part of his kingdom, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And he just asks so little that we share our abundance, that we love one another as he loved us first. And we remain in his awe and wonder each and every day.